Good evening, everybody. I'm glad y'all are here. Welcome to Adult Bible Study. Um, it's going to be a great night. Uh, I've been really excited about what God's doing both in our church and through our church. I'm going to start over. Okay, so here we go. Okay, ready? Three, two, Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I'm glad you're all here. Welcome to Adult Bible Study. Yes, we're adults. Me too. <laughs> Either way, guys, I'm glad you're all here. It's going to be a great night. Uh, God's got a great word for us, and I'm excited to hear what he has to say, and not me. But yeah, I'm excited what God's got tonight. It's going to be really good. Um, and, you know, I'm so glad that we're back in church, that we're on there on Sunday night, uh, Sunday mornings. But I also know that we're also being very careful still, and you know, Wednesday nights are, we're in phase one, but until then, I'm glad to be here to bring you this word tonight. Uh, I, love, I think tonight we just, let's start in prayer. You want to pray, 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 yeah, 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 everyone pray, okay, prayer, let's go. Dear God, I thank you for our stay, I thank you for all you're doing, I thank you for this amazing church that I get to be a part of, this amazing body, God. Thank you for all the people, the men and women that are hearing your word and living it out. God, we trust in you. We know you are good. We look to you in all these things. We thank you. We look to you for guidance and we choose you. We trust that you are moving. It's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So, adult Bible study. How are y'all guys doing? I hope you're having a great time. And I hope you're right right now. You're you're get things are opening back up. Things are kind of going back to normal. And I hope that is the same for you and all and stuff. But you know, life is still hard. And let's be honest, it's been really hard being away from everyone. I had a, a friend uh, growing up. Um, he he went to I, I I was in I was in Texas. You know, Texas. I grew up in Texas and all and stuff and. He, I lived in Hereford, which is in the top of Texas, and my friend lived in Dallas, which is not in the top of Texas. But we were friends, and me and him, every time our, our, we'd go to church camp or we'd go to something with the teens, it'd be in like we'd meet up with the district. We had so much fun together. We were like, like I'm insane, but you haven't seen Aaron and Addison insane. Whenever we'd get together, we'd have so much fun, and we, we would just, like, we'd, we'd go off each other, we'd feed off each other's energy, and it was just so much fun, and we just crazy every time we got to meet to, and be together. It was awesome. And, um, that's, that was it. And I, I mean like this, what, when we were together, we, we were awesome, we're together, we're having fun, crazy, and then we'd go home, and... We didn't have a relationship or a friendship out of that, out of out of youth out of youth events, and even then, like once or twice a year, youth events. Uh, I'd go and I'd see him, and we'd have fun for a week, hanging out, doing stuff and all stuff. Then we'd go our separate ways, and we never texted, never talked, and never reached out to each other. Um, I mean, when we were together for those weeks, it felt like, you know, he's my best friend. We're having so much fun. We're so alike and all that other stuff. But can I honestly say I'm his best friend or he's mine? And this kind of, kind of, this came to kind of like a full like realization. Like I knew, I knew that and I always did. But yeah, a couple of, like by last year, he got married and I, and I found out through Facebook and didn't know his name, didn't know anything like that, hadn't seen him in a couple of years. Uh, and then this year, I got married, and I doubt he's seen it or know, knew about it beforehand because we didn't have a relationship. We didn't talk, we didn't do anything. And right now, you might be feeling kind of similar with the struggle we've been having with church. You know, well, I, I, don't, get to, I don't get to be there, you know, I don't get to... I, I feel great whenever I, you're, you're, you feel great when you're there and you have that experience and you got like, you know, I'm in church, you know, I got this and you're good and all stuff. And we, and we miss that. We, it's kind of like a church camp was taken away from us and we're just so sad and we can't go. 
and then we're allowed to go back and we're like, oh, I love this experience. I get to have that friendship again, get to be in the, that. And it's great, but that's not, God's not calling us to that, uh, a relationship like that. God doesn't want a relationship with him that's only when you're in the building. That's only when you're at church. No, God calls us to something more. But we've been struggling. Now, let's be honest. A lot of us right now, without this connection to church, we've, we, uh, a lot of us have, you know, we've failed on like reading our Bible, getting into his word. It's hard, it's hard sometimes to watch Bible studies on. It's because it's, it's hard to watch stuff just online, you know. It's easy when you're watching Netflix, but it's hard when you're watching Bible stuff. Jeez. So congratulations for making it six minutes into the video without leaving. But it's hard. We're in a difficult time. And it's hard to stay connected. It's hard to feel connected when you're on that, uh, when you're just Yes. And a lot of that has led to, it's led to depression. There's so many people dealing with depression right now. It's led to just hurt and violence. And it's led to violence. It's led to um, emotions being built up and then just released in the wrong way. Whether that's fighting with your family or others. Let's be honest, it's been hard. But that's what the problem. We, we go and we're kind of expecting this relationship like my uh, with God like my friendship with Addison it's great when we're there and all stuff but when we leave we're not I'm we're not growing in friendship we're not growing we're not working together not being in contact he's not my best friend and I'm not his because we never made an effort we never made an effort to be what each other needs to help each other out of just having fun when we were there but 1 Peter 2, 5 says this. Come and be his living stones who are continually being assembled um, assembled into a sanctuary for God. For now you serve as holy priests offering up spiritual sacrifices that he readily accepts through Jesus Christ. That's 1 Peter 2, 5. And what that means is we are meant to be the church. Yes, I, I'm, I'm glad the church is open and I'm glad that we're able to go and be there and stuff, but it shouldn't matter as much. It shouldn't matter as much because we are the church. The building, Crossroads Community Church building, is not the church. You and I and all of us, we are all the church when we let God move in us. We're called to be living stones. Living stones for God to build his nation, to build his kingdom in and through. But how can we do that? How, how, but we get so focused on a building, we get so focused on like, and I had so many, I had so many team stuff planned this summer, which all got canceled. But it's not about the events. It's not, our, our church is not about what, uh, what next program is going to happen. It's not about what next time we're going to meet together, but it's about God moving in us. We are called to be the living church. And not the, not, not the dying church, not the church that's you know kind of waiting patiently for God to move, but the living church. And if you've ever seen, like, uh, we have a plant over here that is growing. We don't know what it is, but we're growing it. And... It's, you can tell it's living by its growth. You can tell that it's living by its movement and its changes. Okay, movement is a strong term, but <laughs> it's growing. It's different. It's moving. It's becoming something new. We're called to be the living stones, to be his church. So yes, I'm, I think it's very important that we gather together. The Bible even sa the Bible says it's important to gather together. But what's more important is that we know that we are the church. You have the ability to be Christ. And Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27 says this. I will give you a new heart 
and put in you a new put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my uh, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments judgments and do them. That's Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. We are called to be filled with a new heart. Because the church happens in here. So, when? Has the church been open this whole time? Building? No. But ask yourself, have you, has the church been open? Have you allowed the church to be open in your heart? Have you allowed God space to work and move in your life? Or, or have we just postponed it till we're back in the building? Or have we like, you know, you know, I, I like it when I'm there, but you know, when I'm gone, it's different. And I think it's, this is a lesson, I, th I think it'd be easier to talk to teens because teens are very much one way, one place and a totally different way somewhere else, you know. But for adults, I think it's, it's more inward. But it matters just the same. Are you being the church? Are you expecting Pastor Dave and Pastor Eli to, to lead you and uh, to, like, to be the church and, that's, and they're preaching, that's good enough? Because they're amazing at it. And I praise God that we have such amazing leaders and such amazing pastors in our church. But they, them two alone are not the church. And they know that and they tell you that. Because you and I and all of us and them are all the church together because God is working in and through us all. I know uh, what I love whenever I uh, was working with Pastor Dave and Pastor Eli is they're always, is always working and seeing how the church can come together. How can we come together? And not just meeting, not just like in how can we gather together, but how can we come together and do God's work? And that's what it's about. That's what this, that's what it's, we are called to be living stones, living and working, and it's amazing what God can do when we allow him to give us a new heart, to take out the heart of stone and allow God to work in and through us. God wants to move in us and through us, and, and so the answer to how are we going to overcome all the struggles that we're feeling with, the you, the, the detachment from being with God is to know that it's not about being in a building, but it's no, to know that it's about God being in your heart. So how are you going to work to make that a, a part of what you're like? What are some practical things that you think that you know you can do to allow God to work in you? If you don't want to be, and that's part of it, coming to Sunday mornings. Or if you and if you're not if you don't feel as comfortable, watch online. But it's more than that. It's reading God's word. It's reading what God has to say. It's reading and uh, it's reaching out to people. Find you might be you're struggling. Someone else might be struggling too. Someone you know myself might have lost a job. Might have lost a family member. Might be just just going through depression right now. How can you help them? How can you be what they need? So this, it's a, it's a challenge. Be the church. Find a way. If, and if you need help, call, talk to Pastor Dave, talk to Pastor Eva, talk to me, talk to Pastor Tammy, talk to Miss Eva, talk to Pastor Billy, any of us. We're here because we're called to help lead this church. Not be the church alone, but to lead us. And so reach out to us. We're here to help. We're here to talk about it. And I'm so excited about what God is doing, not through the building, but doing through his church. Guys, I'm grateful to, for this opportunity. And I'm thankful for what you, for you coming and watching this. And 
And I pray that you've opened your heart to not what I have to say, but what the God has, to, what God has to say tonight. I thank you, and um, I am praying for you. I want to end right now in a prayer and just give it to Him. Um, but I want you to know, the last kind of final thoughts. You are loved. You are more, and you are stronger than you know. And God is with you. God is going to use you to build up his church. Not a building, but a people. God is going to use you. As long as you allow him to change your heart. If you bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the adults watching right now. I pray that they're not hearing Pastor Aaron but to hearing you, hearing your word. God, we trust in you and we know you're good. We thank you for the love that you've shown. Help us not be reliant on a building, but help us actively, actively choose to live with, for you and with you. Have a personal relationship that goes beyond just Sunday mornings. But let you experience and be with us every day. Change our hearts, God. Work in us. We thank you. We thank you for our church. We thank you for the opportunity and the ability to worship you. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for never abandoning your church. We trust you and we thank you. You are so good. You are so good, God. We lift you up and it's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, uh, or adults and ladies, because I say hey, guys, because I'm used to doing teens. So, hey, guys, but you are adults. So, men and women, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great night. I will see y'all Sunday, hopefully. So, Praying for you. Have a great night.